Teamsters power is what we're going to be talking about first tonight. Um, and whew, wow. They, they've had a heck of a week, huh? Um, and I want to, I want to showcase some of the stuff that that's been going on over, over with our friends, the Teamsters, uh, big supporters and shout out to yep. what they've been doing this week. Power. Uh, labor power. So it starts out Monday morning with our friend JB. Now we were here last Sunday night on the 20th and 16th. So literally Monday morning, JB's asking, do you think the white house is going to force a teamsters union contract? And most people are saying yes. And had a decent, decent number of votes. Um, and, but I said, and now I was looking at, well, <clears throat> this is not a good sign that you've got Sean O'Brien claiming that he's asked the White House not to intervene. Um, now, Cat City Cool claims that it's an excellent sign that the team serves are not playing around. But I said, what are they going to do when the White House does intervene and UPS brings in scabs? Because that's what's being set up here. Um, well, that's what they want to happen, et cetera. So that's one thing that happened. However, later on, uh, there was another thing that happened, which is that also no bueno, UPS to train non-union employees as talks stall with the union for 340,000 employees. Now, again, this was last Monday. This happened since we were here last together. So I wanted to, to showcase a couple of those things okay. because a couple of big things happened since then. Then, mm. okay, on Wednesday morning, the, the People City Council tweeted this out, that UPS, or the UPS drivers had a massive rally, okay, um, and you could see just how many signs and how many people are standing at that rally, and I know cameras can kind of tell, tell a story and be framed to tell a certain story, but that's a that's a pretty substantial number of workers there. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the the audio. Hear it. Pump it to me, please. Oh. One of those buttons. Okay. So this is Sean O'Brien, who's the head of the Teamsters Union. Again, 340,000 UPS yeah. workers he represents. So People City Council was there. Uh, I then said that the sound that you hear is all the executives at UPS simultaneously shitting their pants. And then we got even more good news because the 3,300 UPS pilots said that they will stand in solidarity with the 340,000 Teamsters should they choose to strike and not fly. Here's the article. And this, like, this warmed my heart. So the union representing UPS pilots says they will not cross picket lines if Teamsters drivers and package sorters walk off the job when the current contract expires on August 1st resulting in the immediate shutdown of the Express Logistics Company's global air operations. UPS has 3,300 pilots who are represented by the Independent Pilots Association, a separate union from the Teamsters. But if the Teamsters go on strike, we will honor that strike and we will not fly. Sorry, I just want to make this a little bigger, make it a little bit easier for everyone to see. Right? UPS pilots are allowed under their collective bargaining agreement to honor primary picket lines and did that for 16 days during the Teamsters strike in 1997. <laughs> it's... It, it's critical. So in 97, 100% of their pilot group respected your picket lines by not turning an aircraft wheel on behalf of the company. Right? It's, the solidarity is awesome. We will honor any potential IBT strike and act in sympathy with our fellow workers at UPS. Even with freighters in service, a strike by 340,000 package drivers would effectively ground most UPS airlines operations. Right, because there would be few, if any, Personnel to load and unload aircraft, process packages, deliver them to and from airport facilities. But they would try to hire. Yeah, here. It says it's training non-union employees to handle packages in the event that there is a labor disruption. But this is very good news. But, however, however, we don't have a strike fund. 
proud of the pilots for the UPS not have a strike fund. That's scary. Now, I just hope that when it comes down to it, that they actually do strike in solidarity. I'm guessing that they will. And that, by the way, is bringing management back to the table. And that's <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to, to mention here is that so here's another that they're just practicing. This was another Wednesday article from um, Labor Notes, Luis Feliz Leon, as well as Alexandra Bradbury. She's the managing editor over there. So she's like the big cheese. Um, people are paying attention. It would be the largest strike at a private employer in decades. So they are trying very hard to avert a strike and they want to make a deal. And we'd like to see them make a deal as long as the drivers and the workers and the union members get what they deserve and what they're asking for. Um, this lays out a lot of what they want. Teamsters have won TAs at, to end two-tier two, two tier pay. So now the $15 an hour part-time versus $20 an hour full-time and for six-day work for drivers, right? Installing air conditioning in new trucks, making Martin Luther King Day a paid holiday, eliminating driver-facing surveillance cameras. Very important there, right? We don't want to see that facial recognition nope. stuff coming in. So this nope. is all good news. Um, and I think that the pilots really making that move made a huge, a huge difference in why management is coming back to the table and they're doing all they can to avoid this because they thought that if they could still fly, that they could weather through with these scabs, but they can't replace 3,300 pilots. They would really be finished. Um, right. Negotiations stalled on top economic issues. Front and center is the union's demand to raise the pay of the part-timers who do the most of the unseen work in warehouses, sorting, loading, unloading parcels. Backbreaking pace while supervisors scrutinize and hassle them. Of course they do. Because their number, you know, their pay and their bonuses are based upon the time management and the time efficiency of the, the staff. Um so that's their incentive is to work these guys practically to death. I mean, they're not they're not financially struggling, but they still have to you gotta have a life i mean and they're blue collar workers so a strike would cost estimated ups 170 million dollars a day i love seeing that competitors could only absorb yep. a fraction of its 20 million daily packages but like it says the 3300 pilots represented by an independent union have pledged that they will not cross the law the, the picket lines which is huge but, right, part-timers deserve more. We've been saying that for a long time. Part-time starting pay has crawled up from $8 an hour to just fifteen fifty today, which is good, right? But here's a preloader. He works from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., then delivers food for Instacart in the afternoon, racking up 12-hour days because he's only got part-time. So he's making 15 how much? Sixteen sixty-five an hour, and working okay. five five Barely hours. To right. Rape. Well, Lu Luigi, I know Luigi Morris is in the same type of situation where he can't even get full-time hours for UPS. He's got to find another job. Right. He does photography and he writes and he does journalism, but he's also got you know another one of these gig economy type of roles in order to be able to try to. Hey, Rhett, and he lives, I believe, either in Brooklyn or Queens or somewhere <laughs> somewhere out in New York. Um, UPS is a numbers company. She urges members to request a team lift if a package weighs more than 70 pounds, right? But some people would just rather deal with the heavy box <laughs> rather than a supervisor yelling at them. The preloaders are heaving 150-pound boxes in swel sweltering heat without enough fans. Right, they want to give a heavy slap on the wrist, take time away from people, money away. It's a militaristic style of discipline, and that's just it. 
Supervisors exert tyrannical control, posting schedules late, screwing up payroll, <laughs> threatening to fire you, or just stand, staring at you for 20 minutes while you race to unload a trailer at the mandated speed of a thousand packages an hour. I mean, this is UPS has massive profits. Um, they did $8.6 billion in stock buybacks. We covered that last week in the last two or three years. And that alone would more than cover the cost to take care of all of this. What they don't want is to set a precedent and to set a wave of everybody across the board getting raises because this is what union can deliver potentially is raising all boats. So, Sean O'Brien, yeah, boats. We'll, we'll, we'll have some more boats later, but um, Sean O'Brien made a <laughs> campaign theme of his willingness, even enthusiasm, to strike UPS. And I, I like hearing those words because, you know, it's willing. He's, you have to be willing to actually go through with it. Um, and I don't think that a lot of the previous leadership, I don't think that. The leadership for the UAW, for example, which is potentially on the verge of a strike. I don't think they are excited to potentially strike and hold corporate accountable and really bring corporate to their knees. So unless corporate is planning on giving in to the demands of the workers, they're going to need to find a whole lot of workers, meaning 340,000, you know, blue collar Hard, hard laborers and 3,300 pilots in the next eight, nine days. That's good luck. Um, shout out to Joe, by the way, STFU Shitlib 3. INN's Joe is, works at the Philly Air Freight Hub. Uh, I do need to talk to his ramp manager. Uh, he did offer that at one point, and I completely have dropped the ball on that. And I need to get back. And now that we're getting close to strike, I really want to learn about what what they're telling him. What they're is he getting pressure from corporate inside? Is he getting corporate, you know, management pressuring him about what they're going to do and about organizing? Are they trying to stop them from organizing? Are they holding, you know, anti union meetings, for example? I I don't know. I don't know if Teamsters are going to put up with that stuff. I don't think that they will, but. Um, here it, here it is. It was up to locals and the rank and file to pick up these tools and use them. The power was built in tens of thousands of conversations in UPS hubs, parking lots, and cafes over the past year. Labor Notes interviewed over two dozen UPSers, far <coughs> more than we have to space to quote here, for a taste of this rich organizing. And I, this is this is organizing. This is like and accomplishing stuff and holding management to account. And I, I want to see more of this. Um, I want to see more of this over with Amazon, which is why I'm kind of glad in a way that the Teamsters made a concerted effort two years ago. We covered that, if you remember. We were like, mm, is it really a good thing that the Teamsters are really making a, a, like a push to unionize Amazon nationwide and well, now Sean O'Brien is here. Um, he was not the leader of the Teamsters then. And I think that he's bringing a different kind of mindset to unionization, to what's happening over at UPS to, with the Teamsters for drivers and for workers. And he's got a fighting spirit. I can see it. So again, part-timers have a separate meeting after work since the shifts don't align. But to bring the groups together, they, they organize a barbecue. So that's the best thing they've done so far. We love seeing that. Drivers help pitch in for raffle prizes for food. Everyone brought their own tables and chairs. We set up at a local park. And just to get these drivers and these workers talking amongst themselves and sharing stuff and building camaraderie and building solidarity is is huge you know part-timers pledge to support a key demand 
of full-time drivers increasing their contribution to the Central Re Region Pension Fund. And the drivers would back part-timers demand for $25 an hour and more full-time jobs. Seems fair enough. Right? Everybody wins. Teamsters teaching Teamsters. And you've got Indiana part-timer and shop steward El Elba Lieb, who heard about TDU through word of mouth. Right, and went through its 2020 convention, hoping to join the Women's Committee. So in her 27 years of UPS, she had always seen herself as a fighter, but as an isolated one, she was trying to fight management, right, by herself. Suddenly the world opened up and, wait, they're teaching classes on how to be a steward? There's this group out there that was educating Teamsters on how to enforce their contracts. That's great. So... Yeah. Hey, we got some soundboard. We got soundboard, folks. 135 local UPS <clears throat> delivery drivers are out practice picketing, whereas the previous administration would have only sent business agents to do it. Business agents. Hey. Okay. Right. So we've got from 97 <laughs> till now, and these are some of the, they're interviewing Alano, who he was there in 1997. Right. They've got a few people. That now he had just started as a part time loader then, but now the energy had that people had afterwards, I felt connected to everyone. We accomplished something together, and I think they're going to accomplish something together again this time. I really do. Um, my feeling is, is that between the pilots, and yeah, here's the RIP to the two tier system, right? That the Teamsters campaign at UPS is reverberating throughout the labor movement. UAW President Sean Fain elected this year with the backing of a TDU-inspired rank-and-file movement, traveled to New York to rally with O'Brien. And then he went to the White House to play kissy face with Joe Biden. So I'm a little... Chief, Chief O'Brien? I am not as high on Sean Fain and the UAW, especially given their history with workers as um, the Teamsters, which have... A much different reputation, but they have always tended to be more about their workers than their management. In my experience. Bring back Jimmy Hoffa. Well, he was, what? Jimmy Hoffa the third was just Teamsters president a couple of terms ago, but I don't believe that he was terribly popular or effective. Not nearly. See, he, I don't know if he necessarily even came out of the rank and file. But I know that. What? Why is this? I'm sorry, everybody. Is this cut off? Look at that. It was okay for me. No, that screen was cut off for whatever reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. But yeah, it was okay for you because you're seeing my whole screen. But ah, okay. Anyway, um, Alexandra. What? What? Yep. What? Yeah, thank yeah. you. I I feel as lost as Joe Biden sometimes <laughs> on on this stage. Um, in, <laughs> wow, and he's he's had a bit of a rough week, I would say. Um, but yeah, we yeah. can do practice. Not that was him, but right they they're gonna they're gonna bring UPS to their to their knees, and I I really am a believer. Can they just, in, can they just say practice picketing is picketing, and then therefore picket? Well. Except that they're not that? really on strike and they're it doing it on, well, no, because they're doing it on their okay. own time. So, okay. I mean, and are they doing it necessarily my, my like, point still stands? are they doing it in front of the UPS facility? I don't think so. I think they're like doing it in a parking I lot. Hope so. So, I think they're doing it in. I don't see why they wouldn't. Because they don't want to antagonize the situation. They're looking to negotiate a contract. Okay. Why not? Okay. I mean, good luck with that. Like, well, that's, you that's, know, you could do both. That's what they're doing. Um, all right. So what's going I mean, if on? It's over already here? not on company time. I, I, critical thinking. Do it. Typically, senior level executives, companies pay the premiums and receive the death benefit of the employee dies. Yes, I've seen that type of stuff too. 
um, insured uh, heirs or families do not receive a dime. I've seen that. Um, but usually it's not like a huge policy. It's 25 or 50 or 30,000 or whatever it is. But as a business, the cost to replace an employee that they have lost in any way in fake business, right? In any way, shape or form, I, I, I understand. I mean, it's, it's, it's harsh. It's, it's a terrible way to think. Um, but I get why they also take out that kind of life insurance on an employee because in order to replace it, they have an out-of-pocket cost that they can subsidize and supplement and plan for potentially. I'm not sure exactly My disappointment what... disappointment is immeasurable. Yes. I'm not sure what that costs them, and it doesn't cost them much, which is why they all do it. 